Hello and a very warm welcome to the Arms Park. Round three of the URC and early pace setters. Cardiff, who have a 100% record falling wins against Zebra and Scarlets. Welcome reigning champions of Glasgow. The Scots arrive at the Welsh capital off the back of a narrow one-point defeat to Ulster on the opening weekend before bouncing back to comprehensively beat Benetton a week ago. Chris Horseman, former Wales prop and Wales under-20s coach, sits alongside me, Owen Gwynedd, for this one. Chris, this is going to be a step up in, in challenge and an opponent for, for Cardiff. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, Cardiff, what can we say on paper? Two wins from two, ten points. Absolutely, you know, no better start of the season. But as you say, this is the test for them. If we look at their first two games, it was against Zebra, it was against Scarlets, teams they finished above the league. So they should and they would have expected to beat them. This is where we're going to see the evolution of this Cardiff side. Will they always be this team that entertains us? Or tonight against the championship winning Glasgow side, will they go, be out, go out there, still entertain, but actually start getting over the line rather than those narrow losses? Yeah, so many narrow defeats last season for Cardiff. Can they convert them from defeats into wins? And there's no greater challenge than Glasgow. If we have a quick look at the team news then, Harry Millard is the only Cardiff change, the 15 that beat the Scarlets down West Wales. Millard replaces injured Ewan Stevens with Gabriel Hamer Webb named as a replacement. Glasgow Warriors, on the other hand, have shuffled the pack. Nine changes in all. Scotland pair Jack Dempsey and Hugh Jones will make their first appearances of the season for Glasgow. Prop Rory Sutherland and Locke Alex Samuel also start, while fly-half Tom Jordan reverts to fly-half after playing centre against Benetton. Shown it to the plot two, who captains the side for the first time this season, while wing Facundo Cordero replaces Kyle Stain on the wing, with new prop for signing Patrick Schickerling could make his debut from the bench. And just uh, quickly reading that team there, we'll go through the full lineups in, in a second, Chris. But the depth in Glasgow's team is, is, is a pool, it's a depth that, that we don't have here in Wales at the moment. No, it's almost day and night when you consider the strength depths that we have in Wales with our regions. But, you know, looking at that Glasgow side, games I would always say is an old proper won and lost up front. But tonight, for me, it really is the battle of that midfield. Tupolotto, Hugh Jones, tipped to be Lions Taurus this, this summer against, obviously, Ray Lilo, the, you know, the veteran, absolute class player, and Ben Thomas. You know, as I would always say, it's always their forwards that'll win the game. But tonight, for me, it's going to be the battle of the midfield. You know, both teams, all their attack goes through those players, particularly the 12, Ben Thomas and Tupolotu, playing as that secondary receiver. It's going to be an entertaining game, but when you go down that, that team sheet, the likes of Scott, Scott Cummings in the second row, Richie Gray on the bench. I bet Cardiff could have someone like him on the bench this <laughs> evening. Yeah, they've got some bulk, some experience to come on later on, and that'll certainly tell his toll as the uh, latter stages of the game develops. Uh, but psychologically for Cardiff going into this one, how will they kind of be thinking about previous games? Do teams look back on, on the history sheet? They've only beaten Glasgow once since 2016. That was back in 2022. Is that something they'll be considering, or do professional players take a game at a time? No, I think you take it a game at a time, and particularly when we look at this Cardiff squad and, and what Matt Sherratt's done. I mean, literally last year, he, he was building from the ground up. It was a case of last one out, turn, up, turn off the lights, wasn't it, in terms of all the players leaving. He's really settled the squad, and what they've done is they focused on themselves, they focused about how they're going to play, and I think tonight for Cardiff, it's a test of can we impose ourselves and compete with the champions? Yeah, as you can hear the roar, Cardiff... Stepping out to the arms park, wearing the traditional blue and black stripes. Glasgow already on the field in their all-black strips. And it's a great here at Cardiff, isn't it? On a Friday night, beneath the lights, the atmosphere is uh, uh, something to behold. Yeah, it's something special. I used to love a Friday night game as a player. Nothing due to the fact that I get Saturday and Sunday off and <laughs> not have to train on, on the weekend, but it's really special on a Friday night. It's a different atmosphere, Friday night rugby. You know, you've got all the people coming in from work. You can, When you're on the field, you can you can smell the fish and chip van and the beer. As an old prop, I'd always smell the fish and chip van. But there is something about Cardiff on a Friday night in the centre of the capital. Cardiff always rise to the occasion when they play here on a Friday night. And I'm really excited about this game. I think we've got two teams here who like to play the game the right way. And this is a real, real opportunity for Cardiff to say, we've improved, we've moved forward. Yeah, an opportunity for Cardiff to make a statement. It's going to be Glasgow to kick off, playing from left to right as we look onto the Arms Park, wearing their all-black strip, with Cardiff ready to receive. And it's going to be Tom Jordan kicking towards us with his right foot, sends it long into the 22. Alan Lawrence, the number eight, fumbles forward. 
And the worst possible start for the home team. Oh, that's an absolute nightmare. As a coach, you can imagine Matt Sherratt is literally up there pulling his hair out. Everything he's just said in that change room would have been get the ball, secure it from the kickoff, let's get a bit of territory. And Aaron Lawrence there, I mean, it wasn't a difficult catch, knocked it on, and we're straight into a probably a scrum six metres out. And this is where Glasgow come alive. As I said, they've got Tua Pelotu, he can charge over the game line, but he's got that subtlety of hands here, whether he's going to be the first receiver and then bring uh, Tom Jordan in and around secondary. It's a real difficult place here, here to defend for, from a Cardiff point of view. Yeah, look at the replay again, Alan Lawrence totally and attended on his own, ball free in the basket, but it's a scrum, six, seven metres out, about a 20-metre blind side, all the players lined to the left, he breaks to the right, Tom Jordan, on his shoulder, Cal Rowe, right, it goes to the blind side, and it's knocked forward, Davis does well, disrupt, Dobie at the base, Cardiff have the ball, just outside the 22, they reset, they take their time, using the back row, Ben Donald, to take it up one gives Davis a platform taking his time the scrum half lifts the box lands on the 22 straight away Harry Miller there to make the tackle and Glasgow back in numbers and that's going to be the hooker Matthews last season's URC top scorer the hooker with 14 tries Cardiff doing well defensively at the moment. Crossfield Cairo goes. Glasgow still in their own half. On the left hand side, 15 metre line. Ball lifted into the air by Jamie Doby, the scrum half. Solid under the ball, Cam will win it. Takes it cleanly. You can see the difference from both sides at the moment. Glasgow, when they got that kick, the first thing they look to do is get to that width. They're a team that likes to stretch defences, but we can see from Cardiff what they're doing. Alad Davis, he's a seasoned campaigner. Any ball in their half, they're just setting up for that kick and they're putting some good pressure there, but that's a great take from Glasgow. And Cardiff penalised for crossing and blocking. It's gone the other way. Look, originally he's gone the way of Glasgow. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, the... the Touch, uh, the touch judge gave him a little word in his microphone because uh, I think what the, the Glasgow player got in uh, got in the way of the chasing uh, Cardiff defender. But a decent start from Cardiff perspective. I think uh, Ali Davis did really well on that defensive scrum. Showed all his now Scott round and disrupted that opportunity for Glasgow to get it on the front foot. But you know what Cardiff have got to make sure they do. They can't be loose in their kicking. It seems like in the early exchanges they're going to kick, they're going to go to the air and compete. But they've got to make sure that they're getting that defensive liner and stopping the Glasgow with that turnover ball. Yeah, Cardiff, of course, beat Scarlets last week, but they were 15 points down in about 20 minutes of that game. And thanks to the cool head of Alan Davis controlling the game, they narrowly and turned the game on its head. And Cardiff are on the attack. Alan Lawrence this time, ball in hand, carrying hard into that Glasgow defence. Now, first attacking opportunity, the ball over the top. Finds Milan on the wing, but he's well marshalled. Cardiff and Alan Davis have to fight to retain possession and they've lost it on the floor. Glasgow steal it inside their own 22 on this near-hand touchline. Five metres from the touchline. Played in one phase. Trying to prove the angle for Doby. Lifts the box. Win it is beneath it, but it's uh, over the touchline. Yeah, good good attacking set there from Cardiff. Used Ben Thomas really well to get over the game line initially. Then they came around the corner with Aaron Lawrence. And they were on the front foot then. And it was just that wide ruck. I just don't think they had the numbers there. And they'll be disappointed with that because those first two phases, they showed what they can do. But you've got to make sure in those wider ruck, you get in the players there. Cardiff line out. Liam Belcher, the captain with ball in hand, finds the tail inside this Glasgow half. Midfield attack, Thomas, dummy runners, going wide, win it, there is some space there, Grubbers through, the chase is on, Glasgow there, cover it, and it's a cleanest kick, hacked downfield, when it doesn't read it, as the ball bobbles into the 22, when it sends it long, straight down into the Glasgow half, it's run back by McKay, the New Zealander, now the forwards come Rory Sutherland, Scotland international, so many players with international experience. 
ball floated on top, a couple of calls for a forward pass. Play on, says the referee. And Dummy, Dobie's through, he's in clear space into the 22 steps. And the scrum half is over for the first score. A super try from the scrum half. Jamie Dobie, but defensively, Cardiff will be kicking themselves. They jumped up off that line. Yeah, a couple of the forwards there, they came up, but they weren't w watching the nine as, as Dobie ran there. But that all came from that initial poor kick from Cardiff. Cameron should have fielded that ball better. He didn't. He kicked it loosely. And then Glasgow, they're on the attack. And Cardiff, you've got to switch on because got... Glasgow are not a team that are going to kick the ball back they're going to get into their attacking shape and what they did really well there they kept on probing down the blind side which stopped the forwards folding round which means they had a def short defensive line and that was just a really good spot there from the nine running at the line seeing the forwards and they'll be disappointed Cardiff from that but again it was the loose kick from Cam Wynette yeah, disappointed they haven't made Glasgow work all too hard for that try considering Cardiff were down in the Glasgow 22 only a few phases ago. Yeah, and again, it was initially a lovely little starter play, and then Cam Wynette put the kick through, but you need to be coming up. You know, they're all saying, kick is only as good as its chase, and the defenders needed to close close that gate. They didn't. Glasgow got on the front foot. At that point, Cam Wynette needed to work harder into the backfield, or so one of the wingers needed to come across and cover that space. They were on the back foot, a loose kick from Wynette, and then Glasgow, like I say, they get into that attacking shape, and it was that man, Tua Pelotta. How many times was he stepping up for his first receiver? The conversion is successful by Tom Jordan starting in place of the injured Adam Hastings at 10 after playing at 12 last week shows the versatility and the depth they have in the team Glasgow is Cardiff nil Glasgow 7 with 7 minutes on the clock yeah, worst possible start from Cardiff. You know, you're at home Friday night, the crowd was buzzing. Obviously, you've got the confidence of two wins, and then you go in and just, as you say, don't let the opposition in early. But it, it was that knock on, you thought they recovered from it, but it's just an easy score. Great take by winner in the air. Returns the ball to the outskirts of Glasgow's 22 on the right hand side. The attack left in midfield. Domichowski with the carry. Dummy runners forwards, dummy runners in midfield. Back towards Sheed. He has to cut inside himself. The fly half court, Cardiff slightly out of shape. Dan Thomas, Lilo working left the uh, Cardiff back. Ben Thomas in the line, short run off the shoulder. Half a break by Thomas, that's better by Cardiff. The attack from left to right using Dan Thomas, wearing seven. A few fours, Teddy Williams using a six foot six frame to win another yard or two. Ball slowed down so slightly, about 10 metres out in the oh, direction of the post. He's turned over again, not for the first time. Yeah, Cardiff there, they, they were on the front foot again and they almost slowed their own ball down and they've got to make sure that they're getting over that ball. Glasgow are being really clever around those defensive breakdowns. They're waiting for those opportunities. Yeah, second time Cardiff have gone into the 22 and they've lost possession on the floor in the contact area. Glasgow. Far left and they're still in their 22, boxed in slightly. They'll be shaping for a cleaners kick. Doby, the try scorer, lifts it high and into the stands. So still opportunity for Cardiff. Line out on the outskirts on the 22 on the far side, on the right hand side. Yeah, and it's you know Cardiff are playing some nice stuff. It's a little bit lateral at the moment. They're, Cardiff are one of those teams that like to pull the ball out the back, so the, the back will play the ball back to a secondary line of attack. And I just think Glasgow are reading it and just shuffling across the field. I think they need to use their bigger runners, just punch a few holes, suck a few defenders in, and then you can go once you shorten that defence round. You're listening to BBC Radio Wales online, Cardiff against Glasgow in round three of the URC. Cunnelly, Cardiff nil, Glasgow seven as we approach ten minutes. Cardiff win the line out and they get that rolling ball moving quickly. After winning a metre or two, Glasgow bring it to a stop. Goes to deck, penalty advantage. Again, they look to play wide, the chip over the top. Harry Millard, Millard! Oh, is it going to be the bounce? Oh. oh, so cruel for Harry Millard. The ball just wouldn't sit or drop for him. Either all would have been sufficient to drop on the ball. 
Oh, he was he was just watching it the whole time, Harry Miller there. And that again, that was a lovely play. Callum Sheedy coming out the back as as a secondary first receiver, and it was a lovely look at you see Harry Miller. Oh, they say that you know the bounce of a rugby ball is never true there, particularly on this artificial service. But that was good from Cardiff. Didn't go off the top. They drove in, sucked a few defenders, which then created the space on the outside for Harry. And once again, it's those dummy runners in midfield off first phase and they go wide quickly and they're not scared of trying to play off, off first phase. Yeah. No, they're, they're really good, Cardiff, in terms of having that ability. That's, I mean, this is why now having a 12, and we talk about from Wales' perspective, who can handle the ball and be a distributor and just not to crash ball merchant. We'll come back to that conversation later on because <laughs> it's going to be a line out for Cardiff on the right hand side, five metres out. Best attacking opportunity of the first half for Cardiff. They won the line out. They peel to the right hand side, to the blind side. Glasgow react, drive Liam Belcher backwards. Blue shirts drop to receive the ball. It's slowed down on the back foot slightly. And then Lawrence, the eight, tries to get some impetus. Thomas Davis combine. Better from Cardiff attacking the fringes, but for, for the third time it's turned lost over. on the floor and turned over. That's, that's poor from Cardiff. That's just, you know, inaccuracy and loose ball placement. Simple contact skills going missing for the hosts. Three opportunities missed. Yeah, and the problem with this is, it's, you know, rugby is a lot of game about momentum. You know, Cardiff had an opportunity to get straight back. Oh, oh the grubber kick in. is missed. Under pressure, Cardiff score. And it is by the new boy, Dan Thomas. And out of absolutely nothing, Cardiff have scored their first points and has come from a missed kick from yeah. try scorer Jamie Doby. Yeah, Dan Thomas, like any good seven, you know, picking his pocket, just coming round from the blind side, just out of his vision, and just literally blocking the kick and falling on the ball. You know, doing what all good open sides should do, right on the advantage, on the offside line, and going in there and making that opportunity. Just after we were saying how wasteful Cardiff have been, they go and get a, a fortuitous try, should we say. Yeah, and it's a strange one to look at because of the nature of the ruck. There's a couple of loose bodies on the edge. You could have said or, or, or argued by the first look, Dan Thomas may have looked offside. Yeah, it's such a difficult one in terms of you've got bodies in and around it because it was a turnover as well. It's quite chaotic, but all good open sides. What do they say about open sides? If you're not cheating, you're not trying. That's what they, that's, that's what they always say about them. And that's what you want from your open side. You want him there, pressurising their nine, pressurising their ten and yeah, picked his pocket didn't he and that will definitely make the wasteful Cardiff team feel so much better they're back on equal terms Cardiff 7 Glasgow 7 13 minutes gone at the Arms Park and the reigning champions are not going to get it all their own way better from the restart for Cardiff claim it cleanly first time they have the ball Five metres or so outside their own 22, Alad Davis. The former Scarlet and Saracen. Shoes the ball backwards. Again, ops for the aerial route. Stay to chase for Millard and Teddy Williams. A shove off the ball by Josh McKay. Penalty advantage. Cardiff claim the ball. Plenty of space in the backfield. Sheedy sends the kick. Looks for the 50 22, but well covered by Glasgow. Penalty advantage. Wasted or not given. The crowd showing their displeasure to the South African referee, Morne Ferreira. Yeah, I think it was six and one and a half dozen of the other, just in a congested area. But that was good from Cardiff. Again, if you're going to kick, you've got to have that compete. And I, th I think the idea there from Callum Sheedy was, was on, you know, in terms of spotting that space in the backfield. Imakai was out of position when he went up for the first initial ball in the air. Short and line out, Cardiff overthrow Matthews the hooker. Oh, oh, he's through into the 22. Sutherland five meters short. Glasgow on the front foot. Cardiff alarm bells ringing on the right hand side. Tupelotto offload. Great hands from the Scots. Row held up. Good defense here. Dan Thomas once again in there. Last week's man of the match. Doing ever so well. Yeah, didn't listen to the referee there. The referee called tackle, and at that point, regardless of what you think, the man with the whistle is in charge, and you've got to release that player. But that just showed the difference in the team. You know, 
Glasgow, when they get an opportunity, they just come alive. And that man, Johnny Matthews, what did he score four against the Dragons last year? He knows his way to the try line. It was an overthrow. He broke downfield. And again, that was such good attacking play from Glasgow. That's the difference. When they get an opportunity, they just come alive as a team. It was five tries. Five. A front row forward scoring five tries. He's going to get kicked out of the front <laughs> row union, I think. <laughs> yeah, unbelievableness. A hooker scoring five tries. You know, top scorer in the USC last season with 14 as well. Where are the days where the wingers scored tries? I know, it's, that's unbelievable. I think the most five of anything I got was probably yellow cards in a season, let alone tries. But actually, I'll tell, tell you a story. The last year of the Welsh Premiership before it went to regional rugby, I was actually the top try scorer in the league. Were you really how many? Uh, 13. When we yeah, when Bridge End, we won the Premiership. I, it may Shane may have got 12 as well, but obviously mine probably had a combined distance of probably about five yards. We had a good driving line out. I was just just at the back. They nicknamed me the Claw because I would just pull the ball off everyone else. So essentially, you laid the platform and and the blueprint for the current hookers. Exactly. I was a trailblazer. <laughs> You haven't missed anything here on BBC Radio Wales or online with me, Owen Gwynedd and Chris Horseman. It is a line-out for Glasgow, five metres out on the right-hand side. Ball's one in the air, brought down, rolling ball. And guess who? Johnny Matthews has his hands on the ball. The Liverpudlian is creeping right towards the touchline. Cardiff defend it well. And, and Glasgow under all sorts of pressure. Cardiff, Dan Thomas trying to jackal. Glasgow somehow get back to the back foot well countered by Josh McNally Cardiff again flood through that gate one by Dan Thomas and Cardiff the fans the crowd come alive Ben Thomas on his own slightly stranded needs help turns squirms and the penalty for the high tackle and great defending by Cardiff uh, that's excellent. You know, we can talk about defensive systems, how you stop a driving ball, but that was just all heart, effort and guts there from the Cardiff side. They were just throwing their bodies in there with no, no regard for their own personal safety. And it was Josh McNally there who came flying through and got that turnover. And, and sometimes it's just moments like that that can turn the momentum of a game. Sometimes you say it can be a moment of brilliance, skill, but sometimes a bit of heart, a bit of passion, getting the crowd going and really turning the tide a little bit there for Cardiff. And Josh McNally, or Corporal, Yep. McNally. He was in a way, he was on secondment essentially to play professional rugby, but he's been a, a great signing for Cardiff since joining from Bath. Been influential in the first two rounds. Yeah, I think that's one thing I'd say about this Cardiff side this year is that the new signings, Sheedy, Davis, and McNally, have all come in and really added value. Yeah, and having to develop younger players within the regional system, having that experience will pay dividends as Teddy Williams wins the ball in the air. Domichowski or a loose pass behind the back, but it's still life for Sheedy. Cardiff in the Glasgow half, in the five metre channel on this near left hand side. Ball's recycled. Some mishandling in midfield, but the play goes on. It's went backwards. Thomas, the offload. Ray Lilo into the 22. Cardiff somehow still have possession. Attacking towards the right wing. The chip through by Ben Thomas. Another touch of the ball for the inside centre it's knocked forward on the ground by Glasgow so still Cardiff ball yeah I'm not entirely sure what happened there whether the ball bounced off one of the Cardiff forward runners but it was that man Ben Thomas he has been stepping up I could think he gets the ball here it was Teddy Williams from the initial up and under he gathers the ball they went down the blind side I thought at one point there Corey Domic uh, sorry Kieran Azati was shaping a kick <laughs> but he didn't but that was a nice bit of play there from Ben Thomas he just slides in the gap there Let's have a chat about Ben Thomas then. You've essentially nailed the flag to the mast already, but where do you see him? He's such a talented player. Oh, he's, yeah, I had the pleasure of coaching him Wales 18s and Wales Wales 20s, and for me, I always saw him as a, a, as an inside centre. That second, your secondary 5'8", as New Zealand call it, that ability from someone who can he can get over the gain line because he you know he's a big lad. He's six one, six two. He's about 15 stone. He's very athletic and kick, his kicking game is really good. But I just think when I've seen him play. He, if he's given that a little bit more time and a little bit more space, I think at 12, particularly the way modern attacks are, you know, multiple lines of attack against that Russian defence, I think he is someone, because he can pass, he can distribute, he can kick, he can get over the game. I think at 12, you're going to get more influential and game-changing moments like we just saw out of Ben Thomas than you would at 10. That, that That's my opinion. I know some are, you know, better-placed X-10s, maybe Hooky has said uh, he wants to be a 10, but 
this old prop thinks he's a, he's a better 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 at 12. Yeah, the question is then who who plays 10 to facilitate that because I know he's unavailable being a Chiefs you know I'm a fan of somebody like Joe Hawkins who's a quality mm. player similar mould big big player also has good distribution skills. Yeah I think at the moment what we what we need to do with our 10 whoever it's going to be whether it's Sam Costello or you know, again, I, I would stick Ben at 12. I just think he gives you so much more. But we just need to give that person time in the saddle. And I think that's the issue at the moment. So much chopping and changing. But if you've got someone like Sam Costello and Ben Thomas, there's two really good players there. You know, in, in attacking rugby, apart from, you know, your set places, you know, 10 and 12 should be interchangeable. You see that in the modern game. And I think those two players, again, would complement each other really well. And someone, you know, you've got someone like potentially like Mason Grady at 13. That's, that's quite an attacking threat. Nearly 20 minutes gone here at the Arms Park. Cardiff 7, Glasgow Warriors 7. It is second against fourth in the URC after the opening two rounds. The reigning champions coming down to the Welsh capital. I made a few changes from round two. And Cardiff are on the attack scrum, a solid scrum on the far right, right hand side. Glasgow on the back foot, it's creaking. Go forward ball, dummy runners again, back and inside, looking to bring the big runners onto the ball. Five metres short, posts, whipped left, Thomas, dummies, to win it. The full back, he's over, he's scored, and can win it, slices through a second try of the day for Cardiff. Puts the home team ahead for the first time this evening. Yeah, finished by the fullback, was started by the front row. Corey Domachowski and Kieran Azarati absolutely pulverised the Glasgow scrum, got on the front foot, allowed Mason Grady to punch into midfield, and then after one quick phase, it was that man, Ben Thomas. Again, just slightly delaying that pass, holding that defender and putting Cameron in, who ran a great line into that hole. But again, front row forwards there, take a bow. They really put the Glasgow under the pump there, and that's a really, really good, well-taken try there by Cameron Ed. And yeah, we could look at the the lineups: Rory Sutherland, Johnny Matthews, Sam Talakai. We've barely mentioned an, an Australian international be a one cap, uh, and that being uh, against Wales when the Wallabies beat Wales. Yeah. Um, Scott Cummings, Greg Brown, Matt Fargus, and Jack Dempsey. These are quality international forwards. Oh, the, the, you know that is a decent set of forwards. That's, that's a championship set of forwards there. And Cardiff absolutely took no prisoners. And it was, it was particularly uh, Corey Domachowski. As a loose said, he stayed in the fight then and really put the pressure on the Glasgow scrum to get that left hand side up. But it was a lovely delay of pass there by Ben Thomas. You know, re I love that. Just that little slight deftness of hands. Conversion is missed by Callum Sheedy. Alan Lawrence fumbled the first kickoff of the game takes that one cleanly didn't take an eye off the ball Belcher comes left Cardiff once again trying to give that platform closer to the touchline but Glasgow flood through counter attack it's nearly stolen but still there for the blue and blacks yeah Cardiff are making it easy because every time they get a ruck and you know they five seconds I like to see that but from a Cardiff point of view they're, they're sort of telegraphing what they're going to do and just play that kick in that area which Glasgow now know they can send extra bodies into counter ruck and, but I do like that from a referee because you know he's, he's calling that user and speeding the game up Kieran Nazarati taking a knee for a second before this restart scrum in the Cardiff 22 about five metres out from the right hand side so the Glasgow Warriors will have the width of the field to attack. But let me take you through the teams in full as we are 20 minutes or so through the first half. It is still 12 points to Cardiff, Glasgow 7. So the Cardiff team, Corey Domachowski, Liam Belcher, Kieran Nazarati in the front row, Josh McNally and Teddy Williams in the boiler room, Ben Donald, Dan Thomas, Alan Lawrence, the back rowers, Alan Davis and Callum Sheedy, the halfbacks with Ray Lilo and Ben Thomas, the centre partnership. And the back three for Cardiff includes Harry Millard, Mason Grady and Cam Winnett. And four Glasgow Warriors, Rory Sutherland, Johnny Matthews, Sam Talakai, Alex Samuel, Samuel, Scott Cummings, Gregor Brown, Matt Ferguson, Jack Dempsey, the pack, with Jamie Doby, the try scorer at nine, Tom Jordan, Shone Tulipolotu and Hugh Jones, the potent centre partnership with Facundo Cordero, Cal Rowe on the wings and Josh 
McKay at full back. Fed in by Doby. To it for Lotter, straight down the 12 channel, bounces Callum Sheedy off as he barely was there. Glasgow Warriors on the front foot, bursting through, too easy. Calro. And the winger is over, and that's poor tackling, first up tackling from Cardiff. Yeah, very, very poor defence there from a Cardiff point of view. It was a tough lot. Of, we've talked about his hands, but he literally just lined up Callum Sheedy and used him as a speed bump. And once you're on the front foot, the game's really simple. And it was just, a, again, just poor, well, poor tackling there. Two, two Cardiff players just bounce off uh, Mackay there as he came in for the try. That's... Uh, yeah, that's just poor defending. I mean, don't get me wrong, Tupelotti's a big, strong man, but you've got to do better than that, you know, 10 metres out of your line. It's too easy, that, from a Glasgow point of view, far too easy. Come on, boy. Come on, boy. Glasgow. Move up to 12 to equal Cardiff score. So this kick now by Tom Jordan. to put Glasgow back ahead. Takes his time. Strikes it clean enough. But drifts by the right hand upright. So the score remains 12 apiece. Yeah, again, you know, nothing really Glasgow did spectacularly there. It was just very basic rugby. You know, 12 up the middle and then out to the wing and coming off your 10. And from, from Cardiff's point of view, they're huffing and puffing, but they've got to make sure that they take their opportunities. But more importantly, they can't keep Kim and Glasgow easy ins like this. Dobby again. The kick downfield. The good chase is on. Win it. Takes it well on the halfway line on the right hand side of the pitch forwards Domichowski takes it up first ball McNally combines with Donald Carter still playing on the halfway line switching direction from left to right bit of space chipped through by Sheedy it's deflected up into the air fumbled backwards Glasgow gather towards that left hand flank once again Cardiff need to be careful, they got forwards in, in the wider channels, there. they got 4, 5 and uh, 6 defending, but luckily Glasgow kicked that, poorly. <laughs> kicked it poorly, could be a penalty as well for offside in the 10 metres, Glasgow could be a free play here for Cardiff. Millard comes right out to this left-hand side, McNally carries hard, lays it back. Again, another switch in direction, Ian Belcher. Looks to burst a hole, but doesn't get much change for his efforts. Yeah, Cardiff are huffing and puffing, but they're not reloading quick enough in terms of getting into their attacking shape. They're not getting quick ball, so it's allowing Glasgow to win that race in terms of getting their defence set, as opposed to Cardiff getting their attack on the front foot. Yeah, Alan Lawrence does win a couple of metres, gets up to towards that 10 metre line. Good hands by Ben Thomas, win it on the wraparound. It is there for Alan Thomas, Cardiff keeping possession. Still playing between that 10 metre line and the halfway line in the Glasgow half. Win it. Throwing his hands up in uh, frustration. They didn't switch the play back to this near hand left hand side. Dan Thomas, Sheedy looking for the over the top ball, but it's not on. So plays a short ball to Thomas. Yeah, and Glasgow, look, they started on their 10, 10 metre line. It's up to the halfway. They just look, they've got all their bodies on their feet. There's three or four Cardiff players out of the game, and they just look pushing Cardiff back, back, back. For me now, Cardiff, find an edge, turn them, because you're literally just going backwards and backwards and backwards here. And that, that's exactly what Alan does. Alan Davis takes a kick, drops it on the 22. Too far for the challenge. Drove does well, pumps those legs. They've got numbers here. Yeah, there's space on the flanks. Mason Grady has to come up. Doesn't stick a tackle. Glasgow find an edge up to the 10 metre line. Glasgow threatening wide. Cardiff do recover. There's a sense Glasgow do seem a bit more threatening with ball in hand. Yeah, they are. They do come alive and they go from side to side. But that's a great turn over there from Dan Thomas. Not for the first time, Dan Thomas wins it. Cardiff move right the 22 a meter or two away again it's slow ball it's tied up in that breakdown 
comes back to Alan Lawrence, who drops the ball forward and takes the, all the momentum away. <laughs> Disappointing. Yeah, you won't want to look at that one again. But for me, that's, you know, Alan Lawrence always... Alan Norris dropped the ball there, but that was more to do with Cardiff's inability to go forward. They probably played about seven or eight phases just along the halfway line. And Glasgow, you know, they're not bringing massive line speed, but they're just holding their numbers, holding their spaces, and just coming up, winning the collision, slowing the ball down. And Cardiff are constantly playing on the back foot. So what you've got to do there from a Cardiff perspective, one, you've either got to try and break the defensive line, so you've got to go a little bit more direct, or two, you've got to kick earlier. So you're kicking on your terms because when they are kicking to Glasgow, they've got their backfield set, and that's when Glasgow come alive when they get their turnover ball. So for me, for Cardiff, if you can't create the space, you know, make the space, as we always say, or get the ball quickly and turn turn this Glasgow side. Who's is that? Who makes that call then? Is it Ala Davis at nine? Is it uh, for, for me? That, for me as well, you've, it's got to be your wingers. I know it sounds really daft. It's also got to be your wingers because and your fullback and your twelve because they can see where the space is. You know, if you turn to think of it from a nines perspective, where your game is, you're focused in and around the breakdown. Yes, you're going to be looking up and scanning, but that's where your 12 and your wingers, you need to be identifying space early. You look at the best teams, their wider players are constantly feeding that information back into the to, to the halfbacks. You can't rely on a, a nine or a 10 to dictate the game. Yes, they're going to, they, they'll do it, but they need that communication. They need it coming from the outside in. It's going to be a Glasgow restart. The scrum goes down on the first attempt, so they will reset. But also, in terms of that, that, that communication thing, it, you always wonder, you know, you work all week on a game plan and you wonder if sometimes players stick a little bit too rigidly to that, that game plan. You know, someone said to me, do you coach players to remember or do you, co do you coach players to think? So again, do, you know, are they on the field seeing where that space is and identifying it early? Glasgow again, the scrum creaks, goes backwards, balls out somewhere. Jack Dempsey at the base Turn has over. lost a turnover now. It's counter-attacking ball. Ben Thomas juggles, sticks a hand off to Hugh Jones in midfield. Teddy Williams, the second row, does well. Beats the first tackler. Gets beyond the shoulder, needs to pick up the pace, Cardiff. Quicken that ball off the, pay, uh, the deck. Again, it's slowed down. At Glasgow, wall is set. Grady, Shepherd into touch, all too tight on that far right hand wing. Yeah, you know, it, it looks pretty what Cardiff are doing, but if you actually stand back and look at it, how many Glasgow players are out of the game? I think they had pretty much 15 players on their feet. So effectively, when you're, you're attacking 12 against 15, so Cardiff have got to find a way of sucking in some of those numbers. Teddy Williams, that was a really good carry, but the clean-out was too slow. So it turned two-second ball into three-second ball. And that one second from a defensive reorganisation point of view in terms of getting around the corner or getting your wingers up, it just takes away that space. So for me, from Cardiff, I'd just go a little bit more direct, a little earlier. Again, whether that's driving line-outs, whether that's using the scrum to drive up, be a bit more direct with Ben Thomas, use your forwards and go for it a little bit more. Kieran Azarati just receiving some treatment to his lower back at the moment. But that's one thing that Matt Sherrill will be pleased about. It's the second scrum we've seen Cardiff tear Glasgow to bits. Yeah, they are. The two Ronda boys, <laughs> Domachowski and Azarati, they, they are characters. Adam in the 20s, they are proper characters. But they've come on leaps and bounds. But that, you know, that sets a platform where, you know, I did say earlier it was going to be about the midfield so they're going to win the game, but it does show if you can get that dominance up, up front in that scrum, it can be a momentum changer. It's going to be a line-out to restart. Glasgow on there. Far side left wing, Matthews. It's aimed towards the middle. Cardiff and Teddy Williams compete and steal it. Alan Lawrence looks to pass and takes it forward. That's the directness Chris Horseman was asking for. Sheedy delays the pass, brings in Ben Thomas. Wrapped up in midfield by Dempsey and Tui Pelotru. Does find the floor. Teddy Williams, good ball. Sheedy now, oh, it's intercepted. And I think it's, it's it Hugh Jones. They're going to go all the way. It's Jordan and Glasgow. With a sledgehammer of a blow, Cardiff were on the attack, intercepted by 
Tom Jordan goes the length and scores under the sticks. Oh, absolute sucker punch from a Cardiff perspective. They were doing really well on the front foot, but that was really good defending from Tom Jordan. He came up on that, that sort of blitz defence and he got in that passing channel. And I thought he was going to get caught, but he put on the afterburners and he was under the sticks and not a Cardiff player got, got a hand on him. But that, again, goes into that that speed of ball. Because Cardiff's speed of ball is a bit slower, it allows you as a defender to get in position early. If you're in position early, you can see the pitcher and you can make a read. And that's where, you know, at the moment, Glasgow are dominating because they are controlling the speed of ball, which is allowing them then defensively to either shepherd or come up and make reads like that. And after that effort, Tom Jordan's taking his time to put the tee down, catching a breath. Has to uh, compose himself for the conversion. Yeah, he did. I, I think as well, uh, looks, I don't know if Ray Lilo's coming off here with the with the physio. He, and he'll be a loss from a Cardiff perspective because him and Ben Thomas have looked threatening this evening. Yeah, Ray Lilo was so influential last week as we see number 23 on his back. Gabriel Hamer Webb coming on. Yeah, he, the lad from Bath, he knows his way to the try line, but again, it, will he, he'll probably go on to the wing and they'll probably move Mason Grady into 13 now, I imagine. And you know, Mason's had a couple of touches, but it actually maybe moving him a bit closer to the ball. He may give Cardiff that little bit of go forward. So after 31 minutes here at the Arms Park, it's now Cardiff 12, Glasgow 19. Sheedy restarts, lifts it into the 22. Gathered by Dempsey and Glasgow are off again. They quickly up to the halfway line. The chip and the chase by Cordero. Sheedy gathers under pressure, spins away up to the 22. Ball under the left arm. Sheedy weaves his way up field. Dan Thomas, acting scrum half, tries to pick up the pace. Cardiff with Mason Grady up to the halfway line. Or the 10 metre line, I should say. Glasgow have done well to slow the ball down. McNally on the far side wins a couple of metres, the second rower. The one cap, England international. Now 34 years old. With the momentum gone, Davis lifts the kick. Teddy Williams, first there but doesn't compete, holds up. Glasgow in the tackle, and they're hoping to turn this ball over. But it's from, direct from a, a kick. From a kick, so it'd still be Glasgow's yeah. ball, so they're not they're not too fussed about it. The, cr the crowd don't know that intricacy of the law, and they're giving him absolutely pelters there. Really good work there from Callum Sheedy, getting back to that from that break from uh, from Glasgow. He did really well to get out of this 22, and Cardiff were on the front foot, but again, they just seem to slow their own ball down whether it's they go back to the blind side it's, it almost feels like from attacking point of view Cardiff want to get that perfect setup before they go and sometimes if you've got quick ball don't slow it down just so you can get your attack in line you know they want the three forwards the 10 the two forwards and the 12 out the back and it seems like rather than just playing with the momentum playing with the speed they, they they're almost like going back to the touchline Cardiff slowing their all, own ball down to get that shape to attack I think just if you've got momentum just keep on the front foot keep on the front foot Scrum Glasgow. Cardiff, if they can replicate the previous two scrums they've had, they won't be too disappointed to have this set piece. Again, the squeeze comes on, but Glasgow rock solid on this occasion. Doby fires the ball to Tupelo to use his hand. Hugh Jones on his shoulder. Ball still alive, turned over, knocked on. Or an offside in there. Yeah, one of the Cardiff players there but that lovely play there from Glasgow they noticed that the winger was back so the Cardiff had to be quite tight in that midfield it was a lovely way to pass to Hugh Jones and it's a good job a Cardiff player did get his hand in there because they got that ball to the edge there Cardiff, uh, Glasgow were in the money again two to love to show how threatening is looking and shaping to take it up and be the carrier but just that little offload yeah, that's what you need in the modern game. You need that ability from your 12 because the days of playing a flat line of attack against a flat line of defence are long gone. You need to now just throw different shapes, different options, and he is excellent at that. Yeah, and his brother Moses, to pull up to join Edinburgh over the summer. And frighteningly, maybe, 
his brother Octavio in the under 20s at Australia could be another one coming to play in Scotland as Tripolotu weaves his way bursting through and the captain is over for a fourth Glasgow try it's a bonus point try in the first half for the reigning champions and again the power of Tui Pilotu, too hot to handle. Yeah, and what they're doing is they're bringing him just that into that 12-13 channel. But that, what we were saying earlier, because he can distribute, because he can pass close to the line, as a defender, you can't really go up and fly up. You've got to just sit off him. And if you sit off him, again, he just, he's got the physicality and the power to bump you off. And again, you know, good play by Tua Pilotu, but that was poor, poor defending from a Cardiff point of view. Literally bumped off two tackles. It was like watching under-12s rugby there. We did say before the game he's someone who wants to get on that plane for the Lions, and he keeps playing like this this year. I can imagine he will be. Yeah, and from a Cardiff perspective, when it comes to analysis, not making Glasgow work for their tries will hurt. For, for at least three of those four tries, you know, the, the, the coaching staff, the defensive coaches will will be having a field day he'd be absolutely tearing you know Gethin will be absolutely tearing his hair out because from a defensive point of view you can have system and skill mistakes but for me those those are just effort mistakes those are one-on-one -on -one tackles and you're just getting dominated so that's going to be really disappointing from a Cardiff point of view Cardiff 12 Glasgow 26 as we enter the final five minutes of this opening half Glasgow potentially tiptoeing offside he tries to retreat. It's there for Ada Davis with Sheedy lifting the ball high into the dark Cardiff well sky. Well taken by Josh McKay. A speedster at fullback. Slow down it's so Dovey. Again, tries to control the game. Sheedy this time on the left hand side gathers it, pops up to Teddy Williams, the second row. Driven backwards. Slow down. It is there for Cardiff. In the blue and black, attacking from right to left in this first half. Balls on the plate for Davis. Around the corner, Azerati. Again, not really crossing that gain line. Slowed down. Yeah, it's all just a little bit lateral at the moment. Glasgow, again, they're not, they're, they're not committing anyone into the rucks. They're able on their feet and they're pushing Cardiff back time and time again. But it's also lateral and deep. Cardiff passing the ball back about five to ten meters before they start moving forward yeah and again it's all Cardiff are trying to do it they're trying to bring those secondary runners in into the attacking line but it's just so easy to defend and all they say Glasgow are doing it just marking up and just shepherding them and then when they're kicking they're giving Glasgow's opportunities like this to counter-attack yeah Shidi pumps it downfield but it's counter-attack and it's popped over the top and I think it's going to be Hill Jones in for the fifth and all too easy, just that first break, beating the first tackle, ball over the top, and they're in beneath the six. Yeah, but it, it goes to when, when Cardiff are kicking. Cardiff are kicking, not on their own terms. They're, they're basically kicking when they, Glasgow have pushed them into a corner. And when they do kick, you've got to make sure that you're in a position to kick and you've got that defensive line to chase. And that, for me, is just too easy. We, we said this evening it was going to be about to see where, where Cardiff are. And if we're being honest, Glasgow don't know they've got our third gear, but when they've snapped into action they have just shown absolute class but you've got to say some of the defending from a Cardiff point of view has been poor has been very poor to say the least it's Cardiff 12 Glasgow 31 and you could say the tone was slightly set from the first kick when Alan Lawrence just fumbled, fumbled it forward but what's scary for for the rest of the URC is the depth that Glasgow have they have half a dozen dozen Scotland internationals who are just sitting on the bench or at home well of course they are and if this game was a bit closer you'd probably say well Cardiff have the opportunity to turn the screw in the in the set piece in the scrum but who have they got sat on the bench they've got British line uh, Xander Ferguson to come on at tight head from, from Glasgow that, I mean it just shows the strength and depth that they have but I would say this first half has all been about control when, when Cardiff have been attacking it's it doesn't look like they're in fully control, but every time Glasgow have got the ball, whether it's clearing their lines, whether it's attacking, there's an element of control in their play. Cardiff 12, Glasgow 33. 30 seconds remaining of the first half. Cardiff just need to batten down the hatches. 
will not concede again. They've conceded five tries in the first half. Scored two. Which be maybe a solace of comfort. This penalty for Glasgow needlessly, carelessly, Cardiff giving away possession and territory. Yeah, they've got to be careful here from, from a Glasgow perspective. They're not a team that's going to tap the ball off and get to half-time. They'll want to put their foot on their throat. If they can get up to 40 points at half-time, which you know they're capable of doing, Cardiff now need to really switch on, don't concede anything, get in at half-time. And really, the big talk at half-time is going to be, boys, you can't win a game if you don't make your first-up tackles. As simple as that. You can have all the game plans in the world, but if you don't have the ability to stop the opposition on the game line, we've had the 12 run through, Cardiff like a hot knife through butter on two occasions. Glasgow lost by point only to Ulster in the round one 2019. Beat Benetton in round two, scoring over 40 points. And they're heading that way once again, but Cardiff have stolen it in midfield. The ball bouncing about, nearly intercepted by Hugh Jones. Can win it has Harry Millard outside him, the winger up towards the halfway line, Cardiff still in their own half, Belcher cutting back in on the 15 metre line, on this left hand side, attacking to the right, Thomas, there is some space but he has McNally the second row outside him, he needed someone like Mason Grady with a bit of pace to try and bust a hole through the half a gap that was there, GD win it, Here's Grady, has to gather the second opportunity. The big centre doesn't make any ground. Cardiff still on the 10 metre line. It's just too easy re to read from a Gardiff, uh, Glasgow point of view. They're literally just sliding off every Cardiff attacker because no Cardiff attacker is threatening the line. Again, it's too deep, it's too lateral. And a bad read there for Glasgow, dropping off for the kick. And uh, Callum Sheedy decided to keep the ball in hand. Teddy Williams out towards the right. Hamer Webb, the replacement. Does creep into that Glasgow half. Switching the play again from that right flank coming left. Alan Lawrence in midfield. Now this is where Cardiff, they've split the field, less they've got to go, they've got to go, they've got to up the tempo. Sheedy now, Grady with a little bit of space, ripped away in the tackle, poor by Mason Grady for such a big man. To lose the ball in contact like that will be disappointing and that's maybe how to describe the first half for Cardiff disappointing they are well behind on the scoreboard and they'll need to take up a gear or two or maybe even three if they're going to get back into this one a hundred percent you can't afford to miss your first up tackles if I'm the Cardiff coaches at halftime you can talk about all the game plans all the technical and tactical aspects if you don't stick your tackles if you don't get the other team on the back foot and if you can't get on the front foot it's a difficult game. From a Cardiff perspective, they've got to start generating some go forward and they've got to start making their first up tackles. So Glasgow score five tries in the first half to Cardiff's two. The champions well in control here at the Arms Park. The score at the interval, Cardiff 12, Glasgow 33.